Hello and welcome to Fort Worth Central Station. Today we are going to be riding from here down to Austin, Texas on Amtrak's Texas Eagle. Fort Worth Central Station opened in December of 2001 and serves as the city's main transportation hub. The station connects local bus routes to the Trinity Railway Express and Texrail commuter lines, Greyhound intercity bus services, as well as Amtrak's Texas Eagle and Heartland Flyer. As we approach the platforms, a horn rings out just north of the station, and through the tunnel comes Amtrak Train 21, led by P42DC number 69. Train 21 trundles past the main platforms to the south boarding area, and we can head down to meet it. Sitting at the intersection of the BNSF and Union Pacific Railways, while also serving the two DFW area commuter lines, Fort Worth Central is almost never at rest, as is evident by this BNSF hopper train passing by. First up on the passenger side of things is one of Texrail's Stadler Flirt EMUs emerging from behind our Superliner coaches. These gorgeous EMUs have been in service for around four years, with sister units on the way for Dart's Silverline construction. Following soon after is one of the Trinity Railway Express's commuter trains. TRE runs between Dallas and Fort Worth, following the shared Amtrak and freight corridor between the two cities. Approaching our conductor, we can get our ticket scanned before climbing aboard. Heading upstairs, we make our way to the rear of the train, where we find the best feature of Superliner coaches, a clear view out of the rear window. This window may not be at the front, but it's better than nothing, and provides a great vantage point of the tracks we follow down to Austin. With some time to spare ahead of departure this afternoon, we can head back outside to take a good look at Train 21. The Texas Eagle has been Amtrak's neglected child for many years now, running a reduced coach count since October of 2021. Today's train is no exception, with one sleeper at the front, a single cafe car, and two coach cars at the rear. Gone are the days of two sleepers, traditional dining, and an observation car. The observation car is rumored to be returning in July of this year, but who knows if that will actually happen. Traditional dining was also rumored to return when it was reinstated on most long-distance routes, but the Texas Eagle was skipped, so I wouldn't be surprised if it's more of the same with the lounge car. For shorter trips like ours today, this reduced consist is fine, but for longer travels, it's less than ideal. Two of the main attractions for long-distance trains are traditional dining and a comfortable lounge car, but with both gone, the Texas Eagle is only a husk of its former self. If you want to see what it's like to travel overnight on the Texas Eagles Reduced Consist, then check out our ride between Chicago and Austin that went live a couple months ago. Links will be in the top right or in the description below. The show outside isn't quite over. From just beyond the Tower 55 interlocking emerges Texas Eagle Train 22, our northbound counterpart. Train 22 is led by a Locomotive 57 and sports five cars instead of the usual four, with an additional coach class car tagged on at the rear of the train.
Our conductor calls all aboard, and our train departs Fort Worth right on time. Rolling out, we get one final look at Fort Worth before crossing the Tower 55 interlocking. As we pull out of Fort Worth, let's take a look at our route down to Austin. Our ride through Central Texas begins with a southbound departure out of Fort Worth, leaving the DFW area for rural Texas. The tracks shadow the route of Highway 174 through Cleburne, turning east towards Waco past Meridian. The tracks change hands between Highway 6 and 317 ahead of our stop in Temple, Taylor following not long after. Meeting up with Austin's Mopac Highway, the tracks skirt the edge of downtown, pulling into Austin's Amtrak station a little before sunset. We'll cover a total of 201 miles between DFW and the Texas capital city, with a travel time of 4 hours and 12 minutes. Coach seats on Amtrak Superliner coaches are very comfortable. There is always more than enough space to stretch out and relax, or get some shut-eye on longer journeys. Each seat includes a footrest, which extends down from the seat in front. The mesh seat back pocket is in good condition and holds the safety information card. The standard tray table folds down from the seat back and slides forward and backward to the user's liking. Above each row are two lights controlled by the white buttons in the middle of the panel. They're fairly bright and can be moved via the tabs on the sides. Each row also includes two outlets located just below the window. Speaking of windows, blinds can be found along the sides of the train to block out any unwanted sunlight. Superliner seats include both leg rest and back rest adjustments. The leg rest can be extended out from beneath the seat by hand, locking into place automatically. The backrest is controlled by the upper lever on each armrest, which reclines rather far for extra comfort. Looking across the aisle, we can see that recline in full effect, the seat angling back around 30 degrees. The speeds picked up as we headed south, our cars bouncing away over the mainline tracks. BNSF's Cleburne Yard passes by the window ahead of our brief pit stop in Cleburne, Texas. A quick exchange of passengers is made and our train carries on. As mentioned upon boarding and seen when departing Fort Worth, the coolest feature of our coach is the massive window at the rear of the train. From back here, we get easily the best view on the entire train, or any train in the US for that matter, the tracks winding away beneath us as we cruise down south. If you want to see the entire ride from this incredible perspective, then check out the full recording of this ride from Fort Worth to Austin on this second channel. Links will be in the top right or in the description below. While we're enjoying the ride, why not hit that subscribe button? It's totally free, and it really helps support the channel. If you want to go the extra mile with your support, then feel free to check out the channel's Patreon or become a channel member. Patrons and members get their names in the video, access to exclusive weekly posts, and even the opportunity to vote on future videos. If those perks pique your interest, then click the links in the top right or in the description below to learn more. South of Cleburne, we've reached our top speed for this ride. 79 miles per hour is the maximum track speed for this segment of the line, but the Texas Eagle reaches 90 miles an hour elsewhere, with maximum speeds now up to 100 miles per hour in Illinois between Chicago and St. Louis. Bathrooms on board Superliners are located downstairs, so we'll head to the center of our car and down the stairwell to find them. There are a total of five bathrooms on each car, which means there should always be one available. The accessible bathroom is the largest available facility, with plenty of extra space to move around in. The sink works well, with half a bottle of soap and plenty of paper towels.
The tissues and cups were empty, with toilet paper supplied by a single roll on the countertop. The trash can has also been replaced by a hanging trash bag, which I find irritating as there's a perfectly functional trash can below the mirror. Amtrak's bathrooms are pretty basic overall, but the lack of paper products and a hanging trash bag mark down an already lackluster facility to well below average. Downstairs amenities are fairly similar to those upstairs. A water station can be found by the stairwell with a large luggage rack on the opposite wall. Lunchtime comes as we make our way back upstairs. The cafe car on today's train is located forward of the two coach cars and rearward of the sleeper. Stepping inside, we enter Amtrak's Diner Lounge. The Diner Lounge is a combination cafe and lounge car with large booths for groups of four or six. The display cabinet has been emptied with a series of cardstock menus hastily taped over as a cheap replacement. The stock images show only a portion of the onboard options, the full menu found closer to the bar itself. For lunch today, I went with the tried and true mac and cheese skillet with a blue corn veggie tamale and a bottle of water. The mac and cheese skillet will never cease to please. It may be a quite basic dish, but it's a lot of food for your dollar and it tastes pretty good too. The tamale didn't look too appetizing, but it certainly tasted good, although that could have been down to the hot sauce added on top. Overall, for what I paid, not a terrible meal. Temple is our next stop on today's ride, and the only smoke stop between Fort Worth and Austin. Sharing real estate with the Amtrak station is the Temple Railroad and Heritage Museum. The museum houses many old coaches and locomotives, including Santa Fe's Pine Mesa, a Pullman heavyweight passenger coach, and troop sleeper, with Santa Fe 3423 on the far end of the display. It's slow going out of Temple, realigning onto the southbound tracks past Tarrant Park. The miles ticked by as our train powered south, the rearmost bogey chattering away atop the rails. Our train curved into Taylor just as the sunlight began its transition from white to yellow and eventually orange at sunset. It's another quick stop and we're moving again a few minutes later. Before we reached the end of our ride, I figured I'd head back to the cafe for a light snack. From the selection on board, I chose the usual Doritos and a can of Coke. It's definitely not the healthiest option, but the caffeine was certainly welcome. Round Rock fills the windows as we slow for our arrival in Austin, wrapping around the north side of the Austin metro area before aligning with the Mopac Freeway. Before we can get any farther though, we must complete the Amtrak tradition of waiting for freight traffic. Our first real bit of waiting fortunately doesn't come until this late in the ride, but seeing as a Union Pacific worker is out by the tracks, it's clear we wouldn't be going anywhere anytime soon. Finally, after what felt like two hours, but was really 30 minutes, the Union Pacific Manifest train was able to pull forward, clearing us for our arrival into Austin.
Making one final turn east, our engineer applies the brakes and Texas Eagle Train 21 comes to a stop in Austin, Texas. Grabbing our belongings, we can alight into Texas's capital city. The setting sun provides an incredible backdrop for our train, the sun barely peeking through the low-hanging cloud cover. As train 21 gets ready for its final leg to San Antonio, we can bring today's video to a close. Next week, we'll be right back in Austin, Texas for a ride on Red Coach, a business class bus service down to Houston, Texas. If you're new around here, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. It's totally free and it really helps support the channel. There's a lot more incredible content on the way, so stick around if you want to see more. I also want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my patrons and channel members. I really cannot thank y'all enough for your incredible support. If you too want your name in the video or just want to support the channel in more ways than one, then head on over to the links in the description below. Train 21 wraps up its smoke stop and carries on out of Austin. But anyways, that's all I have for today. Thanks for riding with me, and I'll see you in the next one.